Hello everyone, this is Nidhi here. In this video, we will be exploring some more common use cases of Ansible which will help you in the automation. In my last video, I had explained some use cases of the Ansible like how to parse the JSON, how to use the line in file module. In this video, we will be exploring some basic use cases of the Ansible. Let's take a look here. So first we'll check how you can check the connectivity of nodes from the master node, how you can create the groups and the users in the Linux systems, how you can create a single directories or the multiple directories using looping, how you can remove the files, how to check if file is already exist and then use the when and block conditions to execute the task, how you can assign the permissions to all the folders and subfolders recursively, how to copy from templates folders, how to call roles from the main.yaml file and how you can change the directory if you have to uh, execute some tasks from particular directory and at the end we'll see how you can import the Java search. So let's explore all the scenarios one by one. First thing, how to check the connectivity of your nodes from the master nodes, right? So for that, there is a module, there is a method in Ansible gather that fact. This will always check whether the SSH connection is set up between your master and the other nodes. By default, if you don't set this parameter, this is always set to true. But for your subsequent task, you should always use gather facts as no. Because if you don't do that, then in every task of your Ansible playbook, this will always try to first check whether the connection is set up or not and that will take a lot of time. So you should always do this like first check this for all the host and then when you are doing any other task executions of your specific roles then set it as no to improve the performance. Okay next example is how you can create a system group and the users in the Linux. So whenever you are installing any applications you always have a need to install it under specific users. You don't want to use the root or the default users that comes with AWS EC2 instances. So for that you wanted to create a new group and you don't want to set any home directory for this user. If you want you can set it according to your requirement. So in this example, this is very simple commands, create system groups and you will be using group modules. You'll provide your test group, name of the group and this is the command to create a system group in Ansible. Now you want to create a user. So for user, you will be using name test.user group test underscore group. You don't want to create a home directory for this user. So you can say no. You don't want to have the login. So you can set that also. You can put the comment or there are other conditions also other parameters also that you can pass you can check that in the ansible modules ansible documentation so yeah this is how you can create a system group and users how to create a single directory it's a very simple thing so you provide the file path you want this right state directory and you can assign the permissions how do you want to become true and also you can assign the groups also and the owner everything in while you are creating a directory. Now you have a requirement of creating a multiple directories, right? I mean, I am installing an applications. I want to create some temp directory. I want to create some log directory and I want to install some installation directory. So how you can do that? So for that, as I explained, creating directories here, you will provide your path that is coming from here. State directory, you can set the owner group and the mode and with items. So here, this is the, I mean, you can provide here a whole path of your directory also, or you can use the variables also. So here I am using the variables and these variables, you can declare it in your variable files. So here in this way, when this command will run, it will create the four directories automatically. So you don't need to write the same playbook multiple times. Now you want to create a variable and there is another option also. So this is how you are hard coding. You, you have created four, four, four variables in your variable files. Now the next option is you can create just one folder like this and put and put all your directory structure like that. Now in your playbook, you have to just put this. So this is obviously the best way to create the multiple folders. Just use, just create one variables uh, and put 
your three directories or how many directories you have and just use it. So yes, this is how you can create the multiple directories. This is very simple how you want to remove a file. So this is the state is equals to absent. This is uh, this is what Ansible provides the present and absent. If it is absent, then it will try to remove this file. Now we are checking how you can check if file is already exist, right? How you can do that. So this is the state module that you can use it and this is the path. So I am checking whether this file is exist or not and setting that in my variable register binary stat. And based on that, I wanted to run something, some my task. So for that, you can use the block. So based on these conditions, if you have multiple tasks to run, then you can use the block and under block, you can have multiple uh, tasks like I have put that condition when this does not exist, then run this task. If you have multiple tasks, then you can just put it here because I am using the block. Because if you don't use the block and if you have multiple tasks, then this when condition, you need to put it at every uh, task level. But if you use the block, you can have multiple commands, but only when condition only uh, you need to write it only once. Okay, next is how to assign permissions for all the folders and subfolders recursively. So now this is the folders and I want to set the permissions for all the folders and subfolders. So for that you have to use the recurs. So if you use recurs as yes, then whatever folders files uh, is uh, inside this uh, for inside this directory will get assigned this permissions, whatever I am putting it here. How to copy from templates folder. So uh, for uh, I already explained in my another video why what is the purpose of using the templates if you want to create some properties files and generate those properties files at the runtime then you use the template. So here in the templates folder you have created this test.properties.j2 and you are copying it to the destination. So for template. So in the in Ansible, there are uh, two, three options here. You will see sometimes file also. So here, if you are passing the template, then you have to use this template module so that you don't need to provide any path of your template files. It will automatically take whatever uh, it will automatically take it from your templates folder. And this is your destination. And again, while copying it, you can always set what is the user, owner, group and the permission for that particular file. Okay, so how to call roles from the main.yaml file. So in Ansible, you always want to organize your Ansible playbooks in the roles and you would be having one main.yaml file from where you will be calling all your roles. So how you can call the roles from your main.yaml file. So this is the basic things that you have to do and then task. Here you will put include role and this would be your folder name. Whatever you put your folder name, then the, you will put uh, that name. So when you run this, it will automatically call the main.yaml file, which is present in this folder. Now, if you want to run the specific YAML file, then you can do this task from test.yaml. So in that case, it will not run the main.yaml file by default. It will run test.yaml file. So yes, this is how you can call the roles from your main.yaml file. Now, if you want to change the directory for your specific task, Right. Suppose this file, I don't want to hard code any path here. I wanted to test. I wanted to find this file under this opt directory. Then how will I do that? If this is you can pass the arguments and provide your directory. So this this particular thing, it will try to find it under this opt folder. So this is how you can change the directories for your specific task if there is any need. The last is how to import Java certs. So this is a very basic requirements when you have to import the Java certs in your Java directory in a Java lib folder. How you will do that? So previously there was an option people use the commands and then do that. But now this is the good. This is the module Java certs that you can use to import the certs in your Java directories. So cert path. This would be your whatever your cert uh, file it is you will provide the path of your key store basically. So it would be user lib, JVM, CA certs, 
whatever is yours in your case you will provide your password you will provide your alias of your certs executable you will provide the key tool command um, uh, key tool command wherever it is if it is in user lib jvm key tool then you have to provide that if the java home is already set on your system then you can directly use the key tool you don't need to provide the path and this is yeah this is how you can import certs using key tool thank you